Hello everyone, this is Badal and welcome to the channel and in this video we are actually going to learn something. That's right, we are going to learn about muscle spindle and how the nervous system of a muscle spindle works and what's its importance and we are also going to learn about Golgi tendon organ as you can see here or it can also be called as GTO. So let's start with the muscle spindle itself. So the basic information first, in the muscle spindle there are two types of muscle fibers, alright, intrafusal and extrafusal. So intrafusal, both intrafusal and extrafusal muscle fibers are nothing but a modified muscle fibers, alright, there is nothing special into it, it, they are just a bit modified compared to the other fibers. Now what exactly it is, uh, I won't discuss it in this video because that's not the part of it, we will discuss it in some other video. So moving on, so let's first discuss about, uh, let's just discuss this diagram first, alright? I will let you know what exactly is, what it is, and how does it function, what it, why it is so important, alright? So this here, as you can see, let me zoom it a bit if, you, if I can, for a better picture, okay, I hope this is clear. So this red one here, as you must have guessed it, right, this is a muscle, a muscle belly, alright? And uh, these are these yellow lines are nothing but nerves, and this one here, disc-like shape, is a transverse section of uh, spinal cord. All right. Now, transverse means transverse section or horizontal section of spinal cord, which is there in the vertebra. So, anyway, so this is a muscle spindle. All right, and this structure here is, uh, uh, as you can see, this curve, like a pot-like structure, is nothing but uh, they have cut this section all right and they have opened the open this section and we, what we can see here is the deeper structure all right so these two lines as you can see the red one the red bundles are nothing but the muscle fibers which are deeply seated in the muscle belly all right now the muscle fibers which are seated in the deep uh, at the deeper level in a muscle belly like this one here are called as nothing but intrafusal fiber so these two bands, as you can see, it, it's not necessary that there are only two bands, it's just the diagram. But what I mean is the deeper muscle fibers inside the deeper belly, which lies inside the deeper, uh, inside the muscle belly, are called as the inter, intrafusal fibers, alright. And uh, the muscle fibers which are uh, on the outer surface of the muscle belly, which covers the intrafusal fibers, are called as the extrafusal fibers. So these fibers here, as you can see, these one and these one, which covers the deeper structure, are called as the extrafusal fibers. All right. So the deeper muscle fibers are the intrafusal fibers, and the outer fibers are the extrafusal fibers. That's about it. Now, uh, what happened? Uh, this is uh, a sensory nerve. As you can see, I'm tracing it down the yellow line. This is a sensory nerve. It is also written here, sensory neuron. Neuron now is the same thing. So the sensory nerve which is attached to the intrafusal fiber which travels up and goes behind. Now this part here is the is the back side of the or the rear side of the spinal cord alright and this structure the end is the anterior or the front side of the spinal cord. So as you can see the sensory nerve coming from the intrafusal fiber they travel up and goes from uh, goes in the dorsal side of the spinal cord this is also called as dorsal dorsal root uh, of the spinal cord all right so it goes there then it attaches to uh, then eventually it comes out of the spinal cord from the front side of the spinal cord like this and it is called as the motor nerve or motor neuron now this motor neuron goes down and attaches back to the muscle but it doesn't go back in, in the deeper structures. As you can see, the sensory nerve was coming from the deeper structure. However, the extrafusal and the motor neuron, which is coming from the uh, anterior side of the spinal cord, doesn't go back into the deeper structure. It remains superficial. So it attaches back to the extrafusal fibers. All right. And in between these two nerves, sensory nerve and the motor nerve, this one is nothing but interneuron. Interneuron, the name itself suggests it's, not, it's nothing but a neuron which is in, uh, in, uh, in between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron. That's it. Alright, now what this interneuron does is whatever signal is coming towards it from the sensory neuron, which is coming from eventually the interfusal fiber, it just gives it to the motor neuron to act upon it. That's it. Now that is just the diagram which I have explained. Now I will let you know 
uh, will explain how exactly the, it functions and what it uh, what does it uh, signifies what significance does it have in other words all right so let's say you're in the gym let's say this is a bicep muscle all right let's say you are in the gym you're training your bicep so you have grabbed the dumbbell or barbell whatever so basically you have grab resistance all right something uh, which is heavier to lift so whenever you have uh, grabbed the weight and you're about to start your first repetition before that just because of the extra weight and extra resistance your fiber which is the muscles they get stretched because of the external weight remember that you haven't even started to lift the weight yet so because of the external weight your muscle fibers are getting stressed all right so whenever the these intrafusal muscle fibers which are the deeper structures they get stretched the change in their length because they get stretched they get lengthened so they will change in their length so that change in the length of the intrafusal fibers it gets sensed by the sensory neuron and it trans uh, it tra it just conducts that signal of change in the length of the intrafusal fibers to the dorsal root of the spinal cord now the same signal via this interneuron goes to the motor neuron and now what motor neuron does, it, get, it understands that signal that okay, these intrafusal fibers are getting stretched because of the external resistance. Now if you don't do anything, what will happen? I will let you know. So this signal came to the spinal cord. Now eventually it is coming out of the spinal cord via motor neuron and it goes back into the extrafusal fiber like I said before. Now what this motor neuron does, it gives the signal to the extrafusal muscle fiber and tells them to contract. You understand so when uh, so the interfusal fibers just conducts the uh, the signal that interfusal muscle fibers are getting stretched it just let the spinal cord know this information and eventually the motor neuron acts upon it and tells the extrafusal fibers these one outer ones to contract now why does it even important why does it even happen I will let you know so listen if imagine there was no this pathway okay these nerves were not there only. what would have happened if suppose let's say you are lifting heavy weight which you are not accustomed to which you cannot even lift but you're trying to lift it anyways so because of the external weight that you are not used to these muscle fibers the intrafusal fibers will get stretched so much all right it will get so much and eventually they will get ruptured then they will get torn to prevent that so what happens is whenever this signal okay these muscle fibers interfusal muscle fibers are getting too stretched so what what you have to do something we have to protect them so what do we do let the spinal cord know that we are getting stressed too much so the spine so the excessive stretching of the interfusal fibers gets sent to the spinal cord spinal cord tells motor neuron to hey go down there and tell the extra fusal fibers to contract so that they will and as we know that whenever muscle contracts it gets shortened the length reduces so that's why basically we are trying to spinal cord tells the extrafusal fiber okay buddy via motor neuron that okay buddy external extrafusal fibers you have to contract now because if you don't eventually the intrafusal fibers will get so stretched they will eventually get ruptured or torn apart so basically what in short what this is it is a protective mechanism which is there in the muscles to protect itself against excessive stretching now wait a minute what happens when you do stretching like before gym or after the gym what does it mean so shall we not do that no actually stretching is very important as you already know but what happens is let's say if you stretch your bicep so damn much and by that by so much I mean that you go beyond your anatomical limit now what does anatomical limit means anatomical limit means uh, you stretch your muscle anatomical limit for stretching means that you stretch your muscles so much that anatomically like structurally it cannot stretch it anymore regardless of your pain threshold or whatever it just physically cannot happen not physiologically or not mentally or not psychologically but anatomically structure wise it just cannot be bigger saying that let's say if it, there is a uh, there is a uh, metal rod which is only uh, let's say 5 cm long and that's it that's its length that's the limit but you cannot stretch it and make it 6 cm long because if you try to do that it will get ruptured obviously it's different that we can melt it and all that but what I'm trying to say is there is a set limit of any muscle fiber that how much it can actually stretch 
before it gets torn apart. So that's the anatomical limit. So when you stretch, you don't ever go to the anatomical limit of your muscle because it's so painful that you can't go beyond that point. So anyways, that stretching is different. So what I mean is we, just to protect the muscles from getting stretched because of the external resistance or whatever too much before it gets so uh, that it gets rupture, uh, uh, this pathway comes into the picture and protects the muscle from getting in hurt. That's all about it. All right. I hope it's clear. Now let's move on to the next part, which is the Golgi tendon. Okay, it is also called a GTO in short. Now what exactly it is? Let me explain the diagram first. Again, this is the red part is the muscle belly itself. As you can see, it says muscle. This is a this, this is a muscle belly, and at both end of it, the whitish part here and here is nothing but the tendon, as it is mentioned over here. All right. Now this is the sensory now, as you can see here, which is coming from the tendon. Remember, it is coming from the tendon. It is going up, and again, as we, I have already explained, the transverse section of the spinal cord, meaning that this one, this part here, is the posterior or dorsal part. And this part here is the anterior or the front part of the spinal cord. All right. So the sensory nerve, which is coming from the tendon, it goes behind and it enters into the spinal cord from the dorsal side. It, it enters into the dorsal root of the spinal cord here all right and eventually it comes out of the spinal cord from the front side or the anterior side of the way of it and it is called as the motor neuron and which goes not to the tendon again it goes back to the muscle belly so sensory signal sensory neuron comes from the tendon and motor neuron goes to the belly that's it all right now again if you look at here let me zoom it here, as you can see, the red neuron, it is not red, it's just shown dif with different color in the diagram, all right, physically it's not red. Anyways, uh, so what it is, now it, its name is written over here, it is an interneuron, again, a neuron which is inter uh, in between two neurons, other neurons, in this case the sensory one and the motor one, but it is also an inhibitory neuron, means it inhibits what in it what it does it inhibits all right so whatever signal is coming from the sensory neuron as this arrow shows it does the opposite it tries to re reduce or prevent or even stop whatever this signal is via giving a particular order to the motor neuron to act upon it all right now let's uh, let's uh, talk about some example all right let's say you are trying to, uh, let's say again the bicycles you're doing bicycles all right this is a bicycle set now your maximum strength just for the example i know you can lift 1000 kilograms i don't even care but let's say for the, say for the sake of this example you can lift max to max 10 kg with your bicep in the bicep curls all right but some, somehow because of some ridiculous decision you try to lift 15 kg even though you're not used to it all right so but somehow because of cheating or whatever you somehow try guess the lift up a little bit all right so you have lifted the 15 kg weight with your bicep which is not used to lift that much weight all right and when we know that whenever muscle contracts again it shortens all right it length reduces and we can see the belly popping out you must have seen it whenever you lift the weight if you're doing bicep curl your bicep you know it pops out and there's a, a belly which is shown all right so you're lifting 15 kg that you are not used to so these muscle fibers, the belly, the red one, they're contracting and contracting and contracting to get the weight up. All right. Now, but these tendons, these, these tendons are fixed to the bone. So what happens is they're attached to the bone and the muscle belly itself is getting pulled in this direction. This direction. Upwards in this diagram. Upwards. All right. So there's a lot of tension which is uh, and stretch which is developed in the tendon itself now what happens is the golgi tendon organ that does not i repeat that does not recognize the change in the length of the tendon or the muscle what they recognize is the rate in which the lengthening is happening again it does not recognize the change in uh, change in the length what it does recognize is the rate with which the change is happening all right so whenever you're trying to lift somehow that heavy weight that you're not used to there is an excessive and very fast change in the length of the tendon which can be injurious if it continues all right so when the change excessive change in the length fast change in the length is happening in the tendon that change in the length signal goes via the sensory now this one 
to the dorsal root of the spinal cord. Now that signal which is remember the signal here is there is excessive stretching of the tendon happening. That's the signal which is given to the interneuron now. Now as I said before what interneuron does it acts opposite to it. So again the signal was there is a lot of stretching happening of the tendon. What will do? What will interneuron do? It will do opposite meaning that it will tell the motor neuron to reduce that excessive stretching. Alright. Now how will motor neuron reduce the excessive stretching of the tendon? I will tell you. As you have seen here the motor neuron goes to the belly and it carries the signal from the spinal cord to the belly. Alright. Now we know the inner muscle, the contractile part is nothing but the muscle belly itself. The tendon does not contract. They don't have the capacity to contract. It's the belly which contracts and relaxes. Alright. So when the excessive stretching of the tendon happening and the signal is given to the spinal cord, inhibitory neuron, interneuron says, okay, it's too much stretching happening of the tendon. We have to relax it. We have to shorten it again. Okay, motor neuron, go to the belly and tell the belly to don't contract and don't lift that heavy weight and instead let that weight act on you and just stretch instead of contracting and shortening and lifting the weight lower uh, just uh, slow down and uh, lower down the weight and stretch yourself so that there will be reduction in the tension or uh, in the or in or the stretch in the tendon I hope you understood I will repeat it again let's say the tendon is getting too much stretch forget about 10 kg 15 kg let's say tendon is getting too much stretch all right and more any more stretching will result into an injury so the signal goes via the sensory now to the spinal cord in the dorsal root dorsal root all right this is the dorsal root ganglion it's nothing it's not really significant here so it goes to the dorsal root of the uh, dorsal uh, root or uh, dorsal horn of the spinal cord now interneuron says okay tendon is getting stretched too much belly you have to relax you cannot contract anymore because if you do the tension will go so much that there will be eventually rupture of the tendon or tendon might you know come out of the bone so what interneuron does, tells motor neuron, okay, go to the muscle belly, again, go to the muscle belly and tell it to relax. And the muscle belly relaxes. So again, this is again a way in which our body protects itself. Alright, if there was no this, no this uh, structure or this no, uh, what you can call it as a golf container organ, what would have happened is, because of the excessive stretch and you are still trying to contract the muscle and lift the weight, eventually the tendon would have got so much pulled from the, off the bone that it will, you know, it will get ruptured and it will, it will come off the bone and you will get hurt, you will get injured. So again, this pathway is also very important because it protects your muscles and your tendons. So I hope you understood what I explained in this video. So in this video we have got muscle belly and its muscle uh, nerve supply and how exactly muscle contracts in a control fashion and in the Golgi tendon organ how exactly what exactly is the Golgi tendon organ or GTO where it is what does it do and why it is very important to us when it comes to protecting ourselves. So that's it for this video. I hope you understood. And if you have any kind of doubt or if you want to discuss some other topic, you let me know and I will try to make a video about it. So far, that's it for this video and I will see you in the next bit. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and share this video as much as you can. And until next time, uh, peace.